What is the instrument to make an emulsion? So this is a chopper or a cutter. You can call this a cutter, chopper, and this is a bow chopper. Bow because it's like a bow. Okay, là dạng chảo. And what do you see here? You you see with this instrument, there's a sharp here, and a set of knife, several knife, and this one will rotate. When it's rotate like this, and this bowl you put here, the bowl you put meat product ingredient inside. So when it operates, the knife will rotate very fast, and the bowl will also rotate slowly. This will rotate slowly. We bring the meat to here, and the knife will chop the meat very high speed, and then we'll reduce the size, make into a, a better on an emulsion. The speed of the knife can be up to five thousand round per minute. It's very fast rotation, and then this system. You can buy a small for 10 kilogram a batch. Up to a larger system can be two tons of product a batch, and so on. Now we discuss the performance of a cutter. Okay, how good and uh, so on. There are many factors. Like for example, uh, the number of knife. Here you have three knife, but this one you have high three, four, five. Four, six, and so on. The number of knife, the shape of knife, the arrangements of the knife, the speed of the knife. These are important factor determining the performance of a cutter. And this equipment, they normally equip with a thermometer. Here, so you can measure the temperature of the mix all the time, because control of temperature. During chopping is very crucial, very important. If the temperature increases so high, higher than 14 degrees C, for example, then you would not have a good emulsion. Your emulsion will be broken. So controlling the temperature, low temperature is very crucial, especially because the rotation speed is very high, means that the ink increase of temperature is very fast. In several minutes, it can already go up very high. So in doing this, we need to control it. In some next slide, we will discuss further. <clears throat> and nowadays, uh, for the modern large scale of bow cluster, much larger one, they operate under vacuum. So during chopping, there's a cover. They will cover it, close it, and they will pump, remove the air out to make inside vacuum. Okay, this is a border, but industrials can be larger scale. Why they do vacuum chopping or vacuum cutting? When we do vacuum, what is the first effect? Normally. If there is no vacuum, when you chop this with high speed, the air will be incorporated inside. Air will enter, and then the better you will see many hold up air. If you buy yalu, okay, yalu, traditional yalu, you slice it, and you see that many hold up air on the surface, uh, because the chopping machine doesn't operate. Under vacuum, but under vacuum, if you do this vacuum, this air will be sucked out, remove, 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 and then you have structure, structure which is smooth, no air. Okay, and then when you have no air, means that you will have better oxidation stability, especially if this air, when you slice your your lo, you will see that the color surrounding. The air is not the same with the color outside because the air will oxidize some ingredient here, will change the color. So today you buy the product and you slide and you will observe, you will see. So we have better structure smooth, we have better oxidation stability, and during chopping and during waiting step, you have less air 
means that you have lower microbial growth, especially uh, the aerobic group. Because after, during the, the emulsification and then the next step, we do stuffing into the casing, we sometimes it take a while. So if you have less oxygen, then less microbial growth. Okay, so these are the benefits of vacuum chopping. However, sometimes when you do this, the people do not like. Now, if you make traditional yalu and they slice it and they don't see the eyes, they don't see the paws of air, um, air eyes or the paws of air, then they don't like it. And because we are already used to this. So that is why even some company, they have advanced system, but they function this lightly or they don't use the vacuum function. So there's still some the cells here, the cells of air. So the people will like it. But however, to make sterilized sausages, for example, then they need to remove the air so that we can store for a long time. Yalu is okay because you store in a fridge, then low temperature of storage, less oxidation uh, sensitivity. But to make sterilized sausages, you store at room temperature, so we need to really remove all these air cells. Right, so what are the steps during emulsification, mean during cutting, during chopping? What do we need? We need to chop so to reduce the size, but we also need to have emulsifier, as, as we discussed from the beginning. So when, when we chop, what do we have? The first step, okay, <clears throat> so the first step, when we do the chopping, we solubilize myofibrillar proteins. Some amount of proteins, actin and myosin will be dissolved. And these proteins is actually function as emulsifier. And because they will be, be emulsifier and then what they will cover the particles of fat. They will surround. You see the fat? When we do chopping, we have this is the particle, the droplets of fat, and now the soluble protein, soluble protein will cover will function as emulsifier, okay? And then this will prevent the separation of fat during the subsequent thermal treatment. Okay, in, in the next step, we will do uh, heating and then <coughs> cooking, and then this protein will cover the fat, will prevent the fat to release, right? So, in the first slide, we talk about the basic structure of emulsifier is hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. The question now is why protein can be emulsifier? Do protein have this basic structure? Protein, if you remember, protein is a polymer of many, many what? Amino acid. Some amino acids is hydrophilic. All the amino acids are hydrophobic, okay? These are the properties of amino acids. So actually, protein have many hydrophilic head and many hydrophobic cells. So when the protein come to the surface of fat, the protein will be like this, okay? If water outside, the hydrophilic part of the protein will go outside. The hydrophobic part of the protein will go inside to the fat. Also, will cover the surface. So, protein have many hydrophilic, many hydrophobic parts in the molecule. So, they are actually emulsifiers. They are even strong emulsifiers because they have multiple groups. Okay. So this is the bow chopper, but in Vietnam, uh, traditionally and in small factory, when they make yalu, exactly they use this model to make to do the emulsification. If you you see this very often here, uh, the knife 
uh, the, the shop are in actually vertical and this one is horizontal but vertical this is a knife here we rotate but the speed of this one is not as fast at the right side the speed may be here up to uh, 2700 half a minute only okay we get it in the system and here they they have two layer and the layer outside they can put the eyes okay they put the eyes outside so when they chop the eye will maintain the temperature of the meat inside will not increase the temperature very fast okay <clears throat> so you can buy this uh, maybe around 20 to 30 million vietnamese dong so you can have one batch of around 20 kilogram we can make the product for you at home okay <clears throat> so now we go back the chopping time or the cutting time is very important to make a good emulsion a cooked sausage should be cut for long enough cut mean chopped uh, for long enough so that no fat particle are visible so the particle are small enough we don't see by our naked eyes and should cut long enough for what to ensure that we have enough soluble protein to work at emulsifiers that we need to have if we do undercutting means that if the short the cutting time is too short the particles are still visible and there is a risk of fat and water separation in the subsequent thermal treatment in the next cooking step you don't have a good product you have a risk of fat and water separation because you don't cut enough means that you don't have enough solubilite proteins to be uh, emulsifiers if we cut too long it's also not good because you reduce the size of the fat into very small droplets very small droplets mean you have too much surface area too much surface area and now you don't have enough emulsifier and then you have the same uh, result also the risk of fat separation when the fat droplets are not covered then when you cook they will be melted and release outside separate outside right so cutting time is very important it's not only cutting time but the next slide we will discuss we need to have enough soluble protein then the role of salt if you remember the role of salt salt can have soluble protein especially under mechanical under chopping cutting so we do this so we need to know that there is no universal formula for optimum cutting time <coughs> condition for optimal cutting time for all product or recipe and all methods for example you cannot apply the cutting uh, condition of this product to another product when you change the recipe when you change the ingredient when you change the machine you have to really optimize again you do some experiment and to have the best condition to do